After spending five nights at Mini Glacier, we headed to the Prince of Wales Hotel. Here's the passport. Bonjour. Bonjour. Where do you live, please? We live in Nevada. We were sure excited to know we, that we would finally be staying in the Prince of Wales Hotel. We have you on fourth floor. Oh, very nice. Is there an elevator? Um, there is, and it is manually operated by our staff okay. from 7 till 11, so they will assist you. Um, outside of the hours, you will need to use stairs. Outside of the hours? Yes, be, be in the bed before four, 11. <laughs> May I see your ID, please? The bellman took us up to our room on the lift. Jump on in, pardon. Can anybody ride it? Oh, absolutely. With yeah. an employee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it okay, needs an God. employee. Yeah. Yeah. You're so welcome. And, and what floor are you on? Four. Number four, easy peasy. I love that. Wow, well, this has been a dream. I know it's through the screen, but... The Prince of Wales Hotel is by far the most picturesque in the Great Northern's chain of lodges. Our room for two nights is on the fourth floor lakeside. We went to high tea at one o'clock. It was very relaxing and enjoyable with a variety of tastes, from sandwiches to pastry to desserts on different tiers, as well as teas to experience and savor. Um, farm fresh egg salad sandwich, the turkey and brie sandwich, the west coast smoked salmon sandwich, and the cheese and apple biscuits, and then the cucumber sandwich there. Those are my normal afternoon tea ones. Those aren't my uh, dairy-free ones there. Okay. Um, I always recommend finishing off with that cucumber sandwich there. It's really nice to cleanse the palate. I'm going to skip over to my um, dairy-free. Over here I have the almond butter and apple sandwich, the zucchini, and that is a uh, vegan cheese. Um, nice. So that's a sandwich there. And then we also have the pickled vegetables. Um, so all these six right here. Yes, so those are vegan. my um, vegan, well, they're my dairy-free ones. Yeah. So skip up to, the, I'll skip up to the top here because traditionally we do sandwiches and then our pastries and scones. So unfortunately our pastries and scones, we don't have any of the dairy-free ones over here. But we have um, the white chocolate pistachio biscotti, and then we have the dried plant shortbread, a coarse sugar polymer, and the um, orange cranberry scone there. That one actually goes down here with this, um, with the Pascap jam, Devonshire cream, and the honey. So that goes with this, but it also pairs nice with that cheese and apple biscuit down at the bottom. Mm. And on this side, we just have a sorbet. We unfortunately don't have it, uh, the same things there. Um, there is a strawberry sorbet there. And then we're gonna go back down to our middle tier we have the summer berry tart, the espresso cheesecake, the lemon chiffon, and the 
chocolate profiterole. It's like a cream puff there. Um, so skip back to this side here. We have the, um, it's like a, it is a cheesecake, but it's a dairy-free cheesecake. So it's uh, a little bit different. And we have the Earl Grey chocolate tort, the um, uh, chocolate cake there, and then just some fruit salad there. So. All right. That's what we have for our Afternoon tea, you have to give everything a try after. <laughs> after tea, we headed to the Waterton Lakes Golf Course to play 18 holes of golf. Or you want two sets of rentals? Uh, can I see the clubs? Sure. Yeah. We managed to just make it back to the lodge for our dinner reservation. They served great food. In fact, both of our dinners here were very enjoyable. Yes, dear. Chicken. It sounded really good in the menu. I don't it's know. Really good. After breakfast, we hiked down the quarter-mile trail from the Prince of Wales Hotel to Waterton. Had some pretty good gusts of wind on this little trail. we made reservations for the 4 p.m. boat ride on the lake to Goat Haunt, which is actually in Montana. It was a two-hour, 15-minute trip there and back. We then walked around Waterton Glacier International Peace Park, taking in the sights around the marina. To the hotel and have our tea at one and then rest up for our boat trip down to the international border at four. That'll be interesting. 
Hi boat. You can hear me dying. We're in line for the four o'clock Watertown Waterton Shoreline Cruise down to Goat Haunt, which is in the United States. Uh, we're in line right now. The boat leaves at four o'clock. You think you, that you think this is our boat? I bet. Where does it say international? What? Where does it say international? On that other On boat. On the big one down the there? The other one over there. Yeah, we have uh, two lines here, our line and that line. And it looks like one boat, so we'll have to see which boat we're getting on. What do you think? You think they're all going to fit? Yeah, if they go on the lower deck down there. Only 20 people fit on the top. We're on our way. Not a lot of enthusiasm, are you? Is everyone ready for a boat ride? Yeah? All right. I hope so, because if you're not ready now, it's too late. <laughs> so welcome on board the Connie Marleen, and we have a two hour and 15 minute cruise ahead of us down the upper Waterton Lake. We're just going to head out around the second yellow buoy marker, marking a sandbar to the shallow section of water. Then we're going to head out onto the main lake, heading into the wind. Today our destination is Goat Haunch, Montana. We are all very excited about that because this is the first day in the last five years that we've been able to go all the way to Goat Haunt and land at the south end. It's been closed for a long time. Calling, they sound like a dinosaur almost. They sound very like prehistoric. Wow. Yeah, it's they're very interesting, interesting bird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. when you see them. <laughs> now here off the left hand side, if you look right here, lake level. I might be able to pick out a line going straight up the side of the mountain, straight up the side of Mount Boswell in the foreground. That, my friends, is the international border. As the line goes right up the side of Mount Boswell, you got it. You can see that yeah. concrete marker just up from the edge of the water. And if you have a keen set of eyes and you look all the way up to the very top of the cut line, you can see a little white dot right up against the sky, right against the blue sky there. That little white dot, that's another one of those concrete markers. I don't know who had to carry that up there, but uh, that wasn't me. This obelisk marks the northern terminus for the Continental Divide Trail, which is a hiking trail that goes from the Mexican border to the Canadian border. It looks like we are going to be met by one of the interpreter rangers who lives down here, Ranger Frank. So he's going to step on board. Welcome everybody to Glacier Park and Hill Hunt. There's a little path that you can walk on. There's a path that goes from the Peace Park Pavilion around the shoreline, right over there to the ranger station. It's about a 10 minute walk, so you can walk all the way to that ranger station. Just don't go past that ranger station. If you go past that ranger station, it leads to hiking trails. And if you want to hike those trails, you have to clear customs. You do have to actually have a passport to cross the border. But if you just stay in this area, from the Peace Park Pavilion to the ranger station, you're good to go. No passports, nothing of that required. In a moment here, we'll pull into the dock, so just bear with us as we get the, the ramp set up at the back. Ranger Frank, he will greet us here. He'll step on board and say hi to everyone. In the uh, Snowflake Pavilion, off toward the mountains over there where you see the single American flag climb, I'm going to be doing a short program about some of the unique things about this area. So if you would like to learn a little bit more about Goat Haunt, you will have time to walk down there, listen to my talk, and walk back all before the boat leaves. So I'd love to see you down there if you're interested. So we're heading to Snowflake uh, Pavilion for a ranger talk at Goat Haunt. So how'd you like it? I liked it. You like it? Yep. Did you see the bear? Nope. Huh? No. No. <laughs> you made it. 
Yeah. 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 Place. Both Goat Pond and the International Peace Park have a number of unique aspects about them. And of course, one of the unique things about Goat Pond is its name. People ask me about that name all the time. In fact, in 2018, the last time we were open, someone came up to me and asked me quite seriously whether this place was haunted by goats. No, it is not. There is more than one definition for the word haunt, and in this context, it means a place frequented by something. So this would be a place where mountain goats hang out. And in fact, the Blackfeet Indian name for this area, when literally translated into English, means where there are a lot of goats. Did everybody have a nice stop at Goat Hunt? Yeah. Yeah? Pretty cool piece of the world. The cleanest, purest water you can find anywhere on planet Earth. People always ask, could you drink out of that creek? And the answer out here to everything is yes. Yes, you can drink out of that creek. And that lower portion of snow on that mountain, that is what's known as the Herbst Snowfield. The Herbst Snowfield. It used to be a glacier. Back in 2010, it got downgraded. So before 2010, it was the Herbst Glacier. Now it is the Herbst Snowfield. And that kind of begs the question, what is the difference between the two? A glacier is defined as a moving mass of snow and ice. For a glacier to be able to move, it has to have a critical mass, which is about 20 meters thick or 60 feet thick. And once it has that key thickness, it's so heavy, gravity begins to take hold. It begins to slowly pull the glacier down the mountainside, moving very small amounts. But that slight movement, that is the difference between a glacier and a snowfield. So once the Herbst Glacier lost its critical mass, no longer thick enough, they downgraded it. We enjoyed another delicious dinner after our boat ride to Goat Haunt. The next morning, we enjoyed a parfait for our last breakfast before leaving for home. At breakfast, we looked out the window and saw a wedding party taking photos. On the way to the airport, we took a slight detour out Red Rock Canyon. The canyon was quite scenic. We did see the golf course where we had played golf. However, the highlight was seeing three black bears. By the way, color is not a determining factor in what kind of bear it is. We saw two black colored bears in one cinnamon or reddish brown colored black bear. We made it across the border and to the airport and were waiting with others for our flight. We got an email just a few hours before we were ready to take off saying Allegiant had canceled our flight. We were on our way home the next day thanks to Tamara, a Delta agent who found and helped us book a flight home on United. United Flight had a stopover in Los Angeles before continuing on to Las Vegas.
Magnificent Mountain Views, Panoramic Views of Waterton Lake, and the architecture and craftsmanship of this iconic hotel, the Prince of Wales. Every aspect of our stay left us filled with unforgettable wonder, awe, and relaxation. We'll come back August of 2024 and stay on that fifth row with the balcony up there. That should be kind of interesting, especially if it gets windy at night. We won't fly and we will drive our own car.